during the siege of Latham, a local roundhead preacher or person in favour of the parliamentarians denounced her as the great whore of Babylon and he, he said, and, and by other people, but particularly by this one, and he encouraged everybody uh, to send your arrows against Babylon and watch her walls fall down. And he went out in a carriage to watch Laban fall. Sadly for him, Laban didn't fall. They beat everybody off. So afterwards, people said, oh, well, that didn't work. Then did it. But um, one, of the, one of the names that they had for it was Great Hall of Babylon. She had nothing to do with her morality. Uh, she was, um, as far as we know, an extremely moral person. It had everything to do with her religion. And traditionally, uh, when decrying powerful women, uh, insults have had a sexual nature. Lady Derby, who was the wife of the seventh Earl, who was known as in Stanley Moore, the great Stanley, there was an occasion that's uh, documented where when he was coming from his boat in Derby Haven, uh, someone fired in an attempt to kill him and people who were with him in the boat were killed. And it was also said that if he left the island, the Manx would never let him back in again. And this was the Earl, so they probably thought even less about her. And then, of course, after 1651, the Rising, when um, it had come to Ilium's ears that she had, contrary to their agreement, attempted to treat with the parliamentarians and hand the island over with everything in it, every cow and Manxman and pussycat lock, stock and barrel, um, in exchange for the release or the life of her husband. And when that came to William's ears, he managed to, well, we're told, he managed to assemble 800 men at Ronald's Way, uh, where he treated them to an example of his silver-tongued oratory. And he said, she will sell you the tuppence or threepence ahead. And that was the beginning of the rising. So that's how they felt about it then. Um, a lot of that being Ilium's doing, but there is no doubt that she would have done to save her husband, because that's where she saw her duty as lying. If she could have brought it about, but she was a realist and she knew she couldn't, she would have been avenged, not on Ilium Doan, nothing to do with the execution of the Seventh Earl, but on three men called Birch, Bradshaw and Rigby, who were enemies of the Seventh Earl, and had a hand, definitely, in his execution. And if she could have been avenged on them, she would have been. And she acknowledges that. She said, if only they could be brought to book. But unfortunately, they can't be. Um, partly because Charles II, in my view, very wisely, although much resented by the royalists who blotted, lost a lot in the royal cause, brought about the act of indemnity in oblivion, where he said, look, the ringleaders can be punished and everybody else, you're going to have to settle down which really was the saving of the country, but you can understand where people who had fought for the royalist cause and lost much, as indeed had the Derbys, were resentful of this, that they weren't rewarded. But it was difficult. I think the most surprising thing, when I was looking at the accounts of her childhood, and then the accounts of her later on, when... Charles II had been restored in 1660 and she was able to attend court, was that under all this heroism and pragmatism, there remained a love of finery, an interest in court life, um, court gossip, the doings of the Queen, the aspiration that she would become the governess to the royal children, but unfortunately Charles II didn't have any legitimate children however many illegitimate children he may or may not have had, um, that, that, all, that part of her, that very much the French courtier, remained alive. And when she was a child, she, uh, when she was given jewels and gifts for adornment of the person, she was thrilled to bits with it. And later on, after all this heroism and widowhood and worrying what to do with her children and fights with her son. When she got back to court, she became the perfect courtier again, which is quite interesting that that maintained. That's not how we think of her, but that was another aspect of her character. And they did have a saying among the parliamentarians that three women had ruined the kingdom. The first was Eve, who brought evil into the Garden of Eden 
to listening to the serpent. The second was Henrietta Maria, who was married to King Charles I, who was uh, meddlesome, excitable, a papist, and also French, any of which would have condemned her in the eyes of the English public, and indeed did. And she was all those things. And the third was, the lady, was Lady Derby, because Lady Derby um, stood against them uniquely as a woman in her fortress.